Right, welcome back to another video. So we have this mess to sort out today. This is a headstock off um, a John Deere teleporter, like a 3220 or something similar. I'm not quite sure what machine it's off, but yeah, as you can see, all that has ripped out. So it's been repaired before as this, but not very well. I think originally, the holes for the pin will have been barred straight through these plates and then the holes have worn and then someone what someone's done instead of repairing it properly is they've, they've just cut out where the old hole was they've made these bushes and then they've just welded these bushes in the problem with doing that you're just making it weaker you know there's only that much metal around the bush that's actually holding it in especially if your weld's not very good you can see you know these have been welded in not very well at all. You can see the weld there. Yeah, it's, it's been a pretty crap repair, really. And then the other side one's done exactly the same. So that's why with these jobs, you're always better building the old hole back up again and then boring it through. So you're not taking any strength out of it then like you are when you do this type of repair. So then on this side, it has this plate. That's what holds the pin in. That, that plate there is supposed to slot into that slot on the pin, that groove on the pin. So on this side, what they've done is they've just chopped out the bottom side of the bush. I think originally it wouldn't have had a bush on this side. It'll have just been a flat plate with a hole in it. But then when they've done that, they've welded the bush in and then had to chop a bit out of it. You can see, it's not been very welded in very well at all. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop them off straight across there, plasma some new plates out, weld them on, and I'll weld a bush just on the outside. You just just a bush on the outside of the new plate, and then line bar, line bar it all through afterwards. Not quite sure what to do with this side yet. Because I don't want to, I think that's a standard pin. I don't want to put a non standard pin in, so. Yeah, I'll have to. Whether I put a bush on this side and chop a bit out like they've done, or whether I just not bother and just leave it. The trouble is, it's only 15mm thick, so the, the plates are not very thick. I'll worry about that bit when I get to it. So, what I'll do first is I'll draw, draw a plate up. Before I chop this off and I'll plasma them out and then I'll use that as a template draw across the bottom and then chop them off I think so these holes are not very good either in fact they're pretty bad so I can't really leave them like that I think I'll have to sort them out as well so I've got that old piece sat back in there now so I can sort of use that to get a template off uh, I'll probably have to chop off below there somewhere and then re-drill and tap these holes afterwards. That doesn't look very standard. But you can see it's been welded on.
Right, so I think I've got that drawn now. Um, I've set a lump of 100 mil box section onto the stops. You see the stops on the headstock. So you'd think the stops would be the same either side. So I've sat that on there, another bit of box section on the top, and then I've just drawn a line across. That'll be where I chop it off. So then I've measured that distance to that to there, and I measured where the whole center is from that from that end. Then I measured from there up to the top of where that is, and then got my whole center. So all that works out to that. So now if I draw that, cut that out. I make that hole smaller, obviously, and then when I weld it, when I've got it all welded on, then I'll line bore it through afterwards. But that should get me where I need to be. And afterwards, I'll have to drill and tap these holes. Like I said, I'm not sure what I should do, whether I should do the same as that. Doesn't look very good. Or whether I just leave it the thickness of the plate. I suppose if it has. If I do that, then there's a bit more strength when it's pulling back that way, I suppose, which is where it needs most of the strength anyway. So, yeah, I'll probably do that. So I'll go and draw this in CAD now, and then I'll get some 15mm plate, put on my plasma, and get them cut out. Right, so I'm going to draw this now. So we're using Onshape as a CAD program. People ask what software I use. So yeah, I'm using Onshape. So first of all, I'll draw a line across the bottom. That line needs to be 274. I'll draw a circle. That needs to be... 60 mil. Well, I'll, I'll cut it out smaller, but I'll draw it as I've written it down for now. That whole center wants to be 116 mil off the end of there. It also wants to be 70 mil up. So then I'll draw it as a point actually. So I'll draw a point above there because that needs to be. 140 mil and then on a circle drawn up to that point and then I want a line drawn from there glancing onto that circle and then, like that and then same on that side Like that. And get rid of them two. Get rid of that. Get rid of that, and then that is it. So I'll just double check all my measurements, but I think that's right. So we'll save that and cut two of them out. Well, I like to just extrude it and then you get an idea of what it's going to look like. I could mark the two bolt holes on but I won't do that because it depends. Well I suppose I could do actually. I might do that. Just means I've got to go and do some more measuring where the whole centers need to be. I think I'll do that after. I'll do that after. So I'll save that as a DFX. DXF even. So 
That's that part done. So I'm also going to cut out some circles to weld onto the side of these. So that's them nested in sheet cam. So we'll cut them out now. So I've got them cut out and then these are going to weld on the side like that. This one I probably have to chop off there and there for where the like the pin retainer goes. Or that one, whichever one it is. And then I think I'll probably drill these holes in here before I weld it on. It'll just be easier because there'll be a bit of tolerance with the bolts and that. So you know, if the hole's not quite in the centre of where that is, you know, it depends when I line bar it, but it shouldn't matter because there'll be enough tolerance, I think, on them bolt holes. So what I'll do now is I'll chop. Chop off across there. I'll probably just do it with a big grinder because it's only 15 mil plate and I can maybe use that box section as a guide. Run the disc across the top of that. Chop that one off and then set this one up. Set this up again on this side. These are the stops I was talking about. So you'd hope that them stops would be identical on both sides. And then I'll have to just slice down there as well. And then I can just weld that back up again when I weld the new ones on. So what I could do with doing before I start chopping them off is I could just do with some reference points of where this hole centre is in comparison to like that hole. So um it's I've got that sat in. It's sort of sat in how it was can't see any gap anywhere around it so I think that'll be near enough for that but now I just need to try and yeah get some so I'll probably yeah just measure that whole center to that whole center and then that whole center down probably just onto that box section I would have thought that'll do well, I already have that measurement so all I really need is that from there to there
Right, so I've got them cut off. See, the new one fits. That bang on. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this old one on top of here, mark them holes through, and I'm going to drill and tap them holes now. It'll be a lot easier doing it now than it will, will be when it's all welded on. Right, so that's them drilled out at M10. So I'm going to grind the weld prep on here now. Same on that one, that one's doing on that side. And also, these them welding on. That one can be welded all the way around. This side one, because of where that retainer is that holds the pin in, I think I'll have to chop it off sort of around there Right, so that is both of them ground down. Um, I've done that at 60 degrees, no, 30 degrees, so when they're joined together, they'll be 60 degrees. The way I work that out is I have the Onshape app on my phone and I just draw it. I don't know if there's a, there'll probably be a, a way to draw it, work it out, but I draw it like that on Onshape. I leave like a two mil 
like a two mil landing on the bottom of there. So I'll leave that and I'll draw a line across there, set that at 30 degrees and, and then just measure what that is from there to there. And then mark that onto there, mark that onto there. And then that gives me two lines to, to grind down. So it's probably a formula to do that. But yeah, so I just use on shapes easier and quicker on my phone. So this is a pin retainer. So that goes on there like that. So I've just marked across there and sat that on. So I'll have to chop this off across there. So I'll chop that off and then round them corners out. Then I can weld this on and the other one onto there. Weld them on now. So that's them welded on there. So while they're cooling down, I'll go and put the weld prep on here now. So I'll grind them down, same as what I did with them other bits, down 30 degrees. Right, so they are ready to weld on now. So I've got a nice gap down there for the root pass to go into. I've got some runoff plates on and I've got a bit tacked across the top to stop them splaying out. Same on that side. So I'm going to put a root in as it is now on its side and then on both sides and then I'll turn the whole headstock so this is level and then fill in one side at a time.
Right, so I've got the first group pass done. You can see it burnt through all the way to there, but then on this bit where the gap was a bit smaller, it hasn't burnt all the way through. So once I've got it all welded up, I'll back gouge them a little bit and then put a runner weld down there on the inside. Same with this one. It's just not quite burnt through as well as I'd hoped it would have done, but it's not too much of a problem. So I'll tip the whole thing on its side now and I'll fill you know, just fill them in now. Right, so I've got that welded across. I've had to add a bit more at this end because I was just a bit low, even with the runoff plate, so I was still a bit low, but it'll blend in. So that's that done. I've just noticed around there, it looks like that's cracked as well. So I might have to gouge that out and re-weld that. But I'm gonna turn it over now and get this welded up first, and then I'll worry about them afterwards. Right, so that's this side welded up as well now and I've chopped the runoff plates off and uh, just blended it in a bit. When I was welding down here, I got to there and I sort of wandered off a bit. I lost where my outside line was, so I've had to just go back over that bit. Sometimes when I'm doing the last welds, I'll run like a slitting disc right down the outside before you do your final runs and then you've sort of got an edge to follow then, but I didn't do it on this one. 
I thought I'd be all right. But anyway, yeah, you can see where I wandered off and then started back there again. Right, so I'm pretty sure that all of them are cracked around there. So I'm just gonna spray them with some detector, crack detector and see, um, see if that shows up as cracked, but I'm pretty sure they are. Right, so while I've been waiting for the dye to seep into the cracks, I've just uh, dye, grind, dye ground the back of them welds out where it hadn't burnt through properly, and then I'll fill them back in. The rest of it's all right, it's penetrated all the way through there, it's just them bits at the end. But I'll spray the developer on these now and see how far the cracks go around. I think your only is actually that bit there that's cracked. That one that looked bad is not, it, I think it's maybe just undercut on the weld. The others are all right, I think it's just, it's just that bit there. So I'll have to tip it. That's why it's still on the floor at the moment because I'm, I'm going to tip it back on the way up to weld these up. So when I tip it on its side to do them, I'll just gouge that bit out and weld that up. Um, and then that's all the welding done. And then there to line bar through, and then I'll have to line bar these as well. Right, so that's everything welded up now. I've welded around there. I might flatten this weld off a bit more because that plate, that locking plate goes on there. So I'm ready to line bar this top one out now. So before I do that, I'll just cut through that weld, release any pressure off here, and then I'll weld it back on again because because it's only thin, the uh, they can like vibrate and you know like they end up ringing. So if you have some welded from one to the other, it just stops them. Seems to stop them doing that. So it's a, a plasma them out of 45 mil. They need to be 60 mil. So there's, there's a good amount to take out. Um, but yeah, I'll have to work out how to get the line bar line bar mounted now. Right, so that is everything mounted now. So I've got some bits of plate tacked in the back of there. They're tacked onto there. Same on that side. And then they've got me bearing for the bind bar to clamp onto, tacked onto there. So I didn't record any of that because it's just a lot of me faffing about measuring and re-measuring and checking everything's right. But yeah, that's on there now. Hopefully that'll be rigid enough. Might have to tack some it again across there, but should be all right. So I'll get the line bar mounted on the end now and then use that hole there probably because I've drilled, well I previously drilled one end of the hole out bigger so the tool will fit further into the hole because, um, well there'll be 10 mil stick out of the bar. Right, so I'm going to use 
the bigger tools that I have, but I've just had to drill this hole out to 12 mil. Some of them are 10 mil, like what I started off with, and then some of them are 12 mil. So I've just drilled that one out to 12 mil. It's going to be quite a big cut for it, but hopefully it will manage it. it. Doesn't help on here. There'll be an intermittent cut because of that bit missing out the bottom, which won't do it any favours. But see how we get on. That's the first one cut through the rough cut. There's a fair depth of cut was that. So we'll well I'll probably I'll have to cut that off and then move the tool on to there. Well, I've got enough travel to do it, so I'll just travel it onto there, cut through that one, and then I'll maybe do another two cuts to get it out to final size. Right, so I'm through both sides now. So this second side, well, the, first, the second half of the first side as well, was real chattery. You can tell by the chips. That was like the chips out the first half. And that was when it was like doing the intermittent cut and it, I don't think it had a chance for the, like the harmonics to build up. So the second one, I was sort of varying the speed a little bit from slow to fast, just to try and get rid of the harmonics. But, I could do with another bearing. The bearings are a bit far apart, I think. But hopefully now, if I'm not doing as much, you know, as deep a cut, that's it's like a five mil depth of cut on there. Um, if I'm not doing as much as deep a cut, it might not chatter as much. I'm hoping. So I measure what the whole diameter is now, and then move the tool out and go through them again. I've changed onto one of them inserts and that cut really nice. It was like butter was that. Obviously I wasn't taking as much of a cut. That was like one mil depth of cut. But yeah, there was no chatter or anything in the cut quality. Looks really good You're looking there. Can't see very well, but yeah, so we'll move on to this one. Do the same with that one.
Right, so I've got them both cut out to the final size now. So that's them done. So I can take the bar out, take the bearings off. Just measuring that, that was the first cut I did. Um, and it's seven and a half mil depth of cut it was doing. So it seemed to handle that all right. On the first one anyway, it was a bit chattery when I got onto the second one. So that's the top pin back in. It's the old pin, so it's still a little bit of slack. It wants, you know, it wants a new pin in, really. Um, when when the customer brought it in, he says, "Don't worry about the bottom pins if you haven't got time." But I can't send it back like that. Look how bad that is. So I'm going to have to sort them out as well. There's no point, no point sorting that one out and then sending it back, not doing anything about them. So ideally with these holes, before you built them up with weld, you'd, you'd pre-cut them, make them bigger, and then build them up with weld. Um, but because of the amount of wear that they have in the in the holes, I think I can get away without, without pre-cutting them. And I can just, there's enough you know, the hole is oversized enough so there'll still be a good thickness of weld even without pre-cutting it. And another reason why you'd pre-cut them is because if they had like a hardened bush in there and the hardened bush had broken up and bits of the bush get embedded in the like, original steel, then if you weld over the top of that, you end up with like a hard spot. But because these are they're just pins into a hole, I know that there's no hardened bushes or anything or no, no hard material embedded into there. So I'll just give them a right good clean up with a die grinder and a sanding wheel. And I think we'll be all right. So I've got my bearings put on now before I weld the holes up because the holes are still fairly round, they're just warm. So I've used my alignment cones to line my bar up. Got a bearing on either end. So I'll take the bar out now and I know hopefully I can reach in all the way around to weld these holes all the way around. And then when I come to line bar it, I'll probably put another bearing in the middle because they're fairly far apart of them. So I've got welded round them best I could. It's quite tricky reaching in to get to there, but when you feel inside, I think I've got built up all the way around. So I'll slide the boring bar back in now, and I don't know whether I'll set up another bearing in the middle or not. I think I might do. And then I'll have to weld the bit on the end that the line boring clamp, that the line bar clamps onto.
Right, so I've got that one done out to size. Um, I didn't video it. It's difficult to know what to video when you're line boring because once you've seen 30 seconds of it, you've seen it all. But yeah, I was, I was clicking through there and it, it shattered that tool. So I've had enough of these. These are breaking all the time. So I've, I used that hole. I was using that hole to start with and then I moved it onto that hole. That hole is drilled out of 12 mil, so I've been using these bigger tools. And it goes a lot better with them, which I already know it does anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill the rest of these holes out to 12 mil. So every hole will take a bigger tool. And then uh, it'll take a lot more abuse to these bigger ones. And then there's still that one, that one and that one to do. I'm having to do them individually because I haven't got enough room on the bar to be able to cut that one out and then move to that one using the same hole. So yeah, I'm having to change change tool for every hole. Now what? Now I've got that one done. I sort of need this space to be able to measure, to get in a measure. But now I've got that done, I think I'm going to mount a bearing in there because it's just, the bar is just chattering a bit. Right, so we've got converted onto them bigger tools now. So they're all drilled out at 12 mil. We've got a bearing in the middle as well. So that's cut through the first cut. It's gone a lot better with that bigger tool in. Um, but it's, these little holes are difficult. It's a 40 mil bar and it's a 50 mil hole that I'm trying to line bar through. When you see other people line barring on uh, YouTube, they're doing real big, you know, real big bars. They look nice and easy, but these little ones are bloody hard work. Right, so we've got one final cut to do. We need the tool moving. We need the tool moving out 0.9 of a millimetre. Right, so that is all four of them holes done. I think I'll just dress them up with a grinder. It'll be quicker and easier. So I'll take all that off again now.
Right, so that is them holes done. They're not quite perfect, there's a few bits. I might get in to show you, but there's a bit in there where it was real difficult. It was nearly impossible to get in with a welder. Um, but overall, they're pretty good. There's a bit there on that one as well, but the, uh, the old pin. still loose but obviously the pin's worn so you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink so whether they'll put new pins in or not it's up to them it's up to the customer to sort the pins out my job was just to fix this and then second job was to sort them holes out so right so that is that job complete uh, it did have it did have a bit of plate welded on underneath that retainer but i don't think there's any point in it being there you knock that that way to like tighten it up. And if the plate's that way, it's you know, it's not doing any good. I don't think so. I've not bothered welding that back on. But yeah, that's with a new set of pins. It should be as good as a new one again. Right, so that's another headstock sorted. So I've decided I'm not as keen on line boring anymore as I used to be. These little holes are just fiddly. I want to do some some big line boring. But yeah, that's job done anyway. So thanks for watching. Also, I'm trying to get a few more followers on Instagram. So if you wouldn't mind following Snowball Engineering on Instagram, that would be a big help. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.